Hello again, dear friends of the world and YouTube. Uh, today I'm going to chat a little bit about the very first page of the chord reference chart in Ted Green's Chord Chemistry, which is just a bunch of major chords. And if you're familiar with major chords looking like this, or this, or maybe this, you will probably have a deep disdain for this page. I got neighbors, you hear my neighbors? Anyway, this is an important page because it's going to show you so many ways to play a major chord, you're going to go crazy. But let's just take a look at a few of them. I, I'm surprised Ted didn't start this with closed voicings. He starts it with spread shapes and he doesn't even start it in root position because that's how Ted be, right? And just this shape right here, right? You got your third on the bottom, your root, and your fifth, right? Now, try and link this to more common ideas. Like, for instance, this exists inside of, you know, this, or your typical minor shape. Or if we're talking about the Kajed system, you know, it exists in here as an A chord, right? That three, five, or pardon me, that three root five. And we're not articulating everything. We're just articulating and that's a, it's a spread voicing, right? And these are beautiful voicings. Uh, we want to be able to put this shape everywhere. How about, how about here? That's an important one too. If it's not important yet, it will become important. And then of course we got this. Three root five, all right? And you know, I, if, you're, if you're already head, palm, head in your palm, and tr crying and sad, I get it, because, I mean, who's going to think of this as, a, as an A chord? You are, as am I, right? So, this singular voicing of A, you want to get used to it, just do this. All right, just move it up and down, name what you're doing, G, F sharp, F, E, E flat, D, D flat, C, B, B flat, a. Okay, so that's voicing number one. I do not really know the rhyme or reason for Ted's iteration of voicings, but let's look at him. How about this guy? Beautiful. Love this shape. One, five, three. Beautiful shape. See what I'm doing here? I'm taking a shape and I'm moving it in fourths, and I'm staying on the same string set. Uh-oh, lost it there. Nope. That was all of them, with a little stumble at the end. This is a very good way to integrate a shape, is take the shape and yes, move it chromatically, but move it in fourths or thirds or whatever on the same string set. Now this will force you to jump around and get used to that shape all over the neck on that string set, right? So here we're, we're not thinking this way, we're thinking this way. Now of course moving in fourths, of course we can move in fourths this way. So for instance, if I play A like this, it's great to go up to the D major like this but I might want to do it like this. I might want to go to this guy. That's a tough voicing. I could do it like this, which is much more likely, but hey, sometimes you need to do that. And then I could keep going. I could go like this, All right? That's the same that's the same one, five, three situation. One, five, three, then one, five, three on D, one, five, three, and then again, one, five, three, right? The more fluent we can get uh, moving simple triads in simple movement, like fourths and fifths, 
in simple ways, like across the neck or up and down, well, the better we're going to be as a player. And the more the, I guess, the architecture of the fretboard will reveal itself, taking the same shape and moving it in some sort of pattern, either up and down strings or across strings. And as there are an ocean of chords in this book, this is a great way to integrate them slowly but surely. Just find one you like, like this one, or this one. I love this one. Right? Of course, we're used to thinking of that as, but I'm just voicing the one, the five, and the three, and that's really rich on those bottom strings. Moving it in fourths, E flat, A flat, D flat, F sharp, B, E, A. There it was, that was the cycle of fourths. How about fifths? A to E to B, F sharp, etc. Right? And just getting it in your fingers, getting the sound of it, and orienting up and down. Now taking that same situation, the one, five, three, and asking yourself, can I move it this way? To up. Right? Seeing the ways it shows up on the different string sets. So A to D to G. Or how about A to A to A? Right? Okay, so we've made it like three chords into this page. Um, let's look at one more, and we'll I'll probably have to go eat lunch, but we'll look at one more. And this one, Ted has the root on top. So now we got five, three, one, right? Root, three, five, and well, it, it may be a, a new thing for some of you perceiving the root on top of the chord, but then this is a good one to start with because you know we should be oriented with the top E string, and like I said, I would just move this around and fourths. Lost myself there. And you know, what these practices will reveal is that a simple triad, a simple major triad, can sound so many ways, you know, depending on how spread out the voicings are, depending on what inversion you're in, depending on what string set you're on. All of these play into the way the chord feels and sounds and its sensation. Um, so I'm going to have to leave it at that for now, but hang out with page 17 in chord chemistry and hang out with these ridiculous, this ridiculous array of major chords. Um, I'm sure Ted meant well by compiling them all, but I, I heard through the grapevine he actually regretted writing this book. Um, I don't know how true that is, but you know, it's sort of a little bit it's an interesting, the, the chord reference area is sort of like a, a very interesting encyclopedia that's, I haven't found the rhyme or reason to its sequence, but I don't really care, you know. I, I like Ted's rhyme and his reasons, even without knowing what they are. All right, so in short, learn major triads in every which way you can. I gotta go, I'm hungry. There's a flute player next door. I'll catch you later. Adios.